Sometimes we spend a lot of time waiting for when we feel ready to do something, and when that time may never really come. I felt a bit like that this summer, as I was waiting to feel better enough to make costumes, but what did better even mean? Physically, sure, but that wasn't entirely the reason either. I was missing out on projects that could help me feel better, because I was waiting to feel like I had the reason to move forward. So as I was moping about in my robe looking at Venetian fashion, I told myself, Just go do something! And while I usually can't stand that message, this time I think it was an important thing to hear. Because this message wasn't coming from outside, the call was coming from inside the house. So for the sake of my mental health, I begrudgingly set off to make a new Venetian gown. The particular project I selected was actually something I thought of a while ago, and I guess I just needed to be reminded of it enough times for it to finally set the gears in motion. It was actually partly inspired by some of the sketches in my last video because there's just something about that odd choice of things, like, all together, that made me think, how does this work? How does- no, really, how does this actually work? Apart from pointy fashion being very stylish. I mean, triangles, man. Can't go wrong with triangles. It just so happens that I had a fabric already. A deep, dark, almost goth-looking damask that seemed to be made just for this print in Vicelio's book from 1590. So the first thing I had to do was figure out how the heck this bodice would have been made. I think what's really interesting about these styles especially is that it looks as though, right, this is a fairly short thing here, but it starts really short and it goes really long. Definitely we're going to make sure that the point at the front of the bodice is pretty far down but it's amazing how much it curves up to, I mean this looks like it's possibly right even under her bust and the same thing over here too and i'm assuming that the that this longness here is to make up for the show peens which are making them taller so that it's less noticeable so a lot of fashion choices that are 100 percent like intentional but meant to look like they're not <laughs> After looking a while, I found one of my patterns I drafted from The Modern Maker, which is a wonderful set of books, and Matthew the author has a channel as well where he teaches the techniques to draft patterns for this area. Definitely go to my description to find the links for that. I have a short waist, and so many of my drafts were shortened, especially at center front, for more of a Florentine look. To get the right look on this, however, I'm going to need something longer. For that measurement, I made the same gesture with my arm that the lady in the print is making, and then I just measured about where that hit me, and then kinda guessed. The best part of all of this is that it's a mock-up, so adjustments will be made during the first fitting. For the back, I kinda just guessed again. <laughs> Noting, though, that in this fresco, which I absolutely love, it shows very low backs on the ladies, so I probably won't make mine quite so low, but I could definitely afford to chop some of that out. You probably don't know this, but cutting things out in front of a camera is actually surprisingly hard. So here's me getting really sick of it and just deciding to do the rest of it later. If you are team ironing the fabric before you cut things out, you should look away right now. Look away! Don't look! Don't do it! Okay, you can look now. Ah, isn't that better? For my mock-ups, I like to use hook and eye tape instead of lacing, and the reason that I do this is because lacing over and over as you fit something on you is a pain. I attached them using Ye old Bernina, which is obviously historically accurate. Just need to wade through my sewing machine box of disaster. Here we go. A better foot for- oh. Oh wait. No. That's not actually- oh wait. The, okay, no, this one's better. Okay! And speaking of historically accurate, the Italians actually did use layers of wool and linen in center front to stiffen the bodice, and if this mock-up even stands a chance of resembling what I need, I'm going to need to add some. So, here is some footage of me enjoying my favorite thing ever. Pad stitching. No, really, I actually like doing this. I, I know it's hard, because sometimes when I talk, I just have sarcasm. It's built in. It's part of being from New Jersey. Okay. Just about ready to try this on. Gotta use my smock or camicha. 
For the right strap length, I just cut out rectangles and then I attach to the back parts of the straps. And then when it's on, when I'm fitting it, I can then just adjust the fronts, which is way easier than trying to adjust the backs and not getting poked. The first try on was so loose. <laughs> I immediately took in like one to two inches all together. And once it started to fit in the right place, I got this look. Well, actually not this look. There's actually some cardboard in there. There just wasn't enough stiffness center front, and I was getting annoyed. But now we're gonna segue into something really cool. Okay, the reason why I have cardboard in there is actually not just to be funny. They used boards to stiffen center front. Look, an actual painting showing this. Granted, it probably wasn't from a cardboard box, more likely stiffened linen of some sort. And yes, there is an argument that this is only a thing they did with kids to keep their posture, but let's dream. There are more options for structure in Moda a Firenze, which is a great book. Even more in Patterns of Fashion that describes stays from early 17th century, which might have used reeds or bents. So I could have used the plastic zip ties I had in my closet. They were just sitting there asking to be used. But the word cassetta came up recently in a group of other Renaissance-obsessed humans, and this translates to ribs. And while I could have done the logical thing and used boning or glue, I decided to try something different altogether. Just because. Do I have a good reason? No, I don't. But I did get to hand sew some more. That was fun. I just tried something I wanted to do for no good reason. I just want to make it abundantly clear that I did not expect that this was even going to remotely work, but we will see how it goes. Um, so without further ado, here is the try on. Again, there was no reason to do this at all. I guess I just wanted to know. Don't you just hate it when a camera dies in the middle of a really important thing and you don't know that that happened? Yeah, that's what happened. So I'm sorry. I'm really mad. It did, however, work. I can tell you that. <sighs> So anyway, now I'm tracing the mock-up for the final pattern so I can cut the fashion fabric and use my canvas interlining. I could write a sonnet about this. Literal sonnets about this fabric. I don't even remember if what it is. I think it's a blend, some random thing I got off of Fabric Guru. It's amazing. Now I begin the process of wrapping the fashion fabric around the canvas interlining. I recycled the wool padding by pad stitching the whole thing to the canvas again. How meta. Pad stitching the pad stitching. Wrapping the fabric essentially means whip stitching the exterior fabric around the canvas. I did this at the sides and waist. For the top and arms, I will wrap the rough edges in bias later. In order to get this done enough for the next fitting, I need to make the eyelets, the holes for lacing the sides closed. I chose to add a strip of linen to just the area where the eyelets go and will add the remaining lining at the very end. And now I will tell you a secret. I'm preparing you now. We're not gonna see the end of this in this video. We will see how the fitting goes and then the next video I will finish it. So you will actually get to see the fit with the corded insert this time, I promise. For this fitting, I decided to break out my ultra fancy Venetian camicia with insertion lace that I am very much proud of. And then quickly learned I was lacing from the bottom instead of the top. Let's try this again. Lacing was done off camera so I could actually see what I'm actually doing. Well, let's move the furniture. The back. The side. And now the moment of truth. Does this thing even remotely help or work at all? Like this, not so much. I'm glad that I'm enjoying myself. You weren't expecting a play-by-play -play of a fitting, were you? My friends, I think it's working. And there we have it. No boning used. Very comfortable. Pretty straight. Pretty good. I'm excited. Look what happens when you make something for no good reason. And I can't wait to show you the rest next time. 
Take care, my salty possums.